This was the first video I recorded since then I've recorded like three or four more and the quality does get better. I take more conscious effort about it, but I want to do some shout outs as I go. I want to say Grow Mouse and Green Jeans, thank you very much for your knowledge and your instruction. You guys are fantastic and you have a comprehensive understanding that you are capable and able to pass on to me. And I thank you very much for it because I'm kind of dull headed and it's hard to do. Super SPL, thank you for being a never-ending wealth of knowledge on Roll It Up. LD Gardner, thank you for your content and your continuously helping me understand certain things that I didn't think I would ever grasp. And your oldie but a goodie, LED One Shot, you are the original inspiration to look at LEDs as a viable solution for growing indoors. With that said, let me explain a little bit about this video. I don't feel like this video needs to be... Um, instructional I'm not trying to be instructional I think that green jeans and grow mouse and LED gardener are very very much so better at this than I am this is just strictly a person who took their knowledge and applied it to himself and is now showing you the results of it I really like that LED build DIY stuff I like just in general DIY stuff and so for me it's just really exciting and I want to see more of it, but I find that the best way to get more content is to give more content, so be the change you want to see in the world, and that's what I'm attempting to do. I'm attempting to show what I did and explain how my failings so that you can then build from that and show better stuff, and then I can be inspired then again from anyone else. And that's what I hope to see, that's what I hope to do. I don't think that this is the best idea. I definitely am not very good at it. I'm not an engineer. I probably cut 20 extra drill holes because I didn't measure right. I measured the outside diameter and then the inside diameter and I cut towards the middle diameter. Just stupid shit that you overlook that would have taken so much less time if I had paid attention to the golden rule, which is measure twice, cut once. And I did measure twice, but I just didn't measure from the same spot both times just not paying attention working two jobs it's really difficult to find time and so it was thrown in between mornings before I had to go to work or after uh, in the evening when I got home from work and so it's one of those things where you really work on attempting to fill it in and it probably took about 12 hours over the span of two weeks to get this finished um, the other note I want to say is it probably costs around $300, $350 to build this uh, because there's things like, you know, you buy the cobs and the, um, the heat sinks, which I got off Northern Grow Lights, and then you buy the driver and the driver came off of Mauser. And so after all of that, it's probably like $250. You're like, yeah, fuck yeah, $250. It sounds like a great deal. And then you buy the ink wire, and then you buy the spray paint, and then you buy the wire, and then you realize you don't have a soldering iron. So you gotta buy a soldering iron. Oh, you don't have Wago clips? You gotta get Wago clips. Oh, you don't have um, uh, drill bits, or you don't have um, bolts, or you don't have nuts, or you don't have rivets, or you wanna get a riveter because you think that's the better way to do it, or you do this, or you do that. Or for me, I encased it at the end with plastic, and I was like, yeah, fuck yeah, plastic's the best and it was a plastic coating with aluminum sheeting so that I could heat it up to a certain temperature without worrying about the plastic melting and I was like fuck yeah it'll look cool and so by the end of it it started accumulating price and money and I realized that it was more expensive than I had originally set out to do and um, it wasn't that it was so overpriced that I regret doing it but I just didn't plan on it being that much at that time and that's one of those things that you need to look at the other thing that you need to look at is um, heating and cooling and how you want to do it. The passive heat sinks are fucking great. I didn't really have to do anything. Later you'll see a picture of what I did when I encased it. I wanted to put it in line so I put two phalanges on the back so I can run air through it and suck air out. And uh, one of those things that you overlook too, I overlook, is that there are... Um, when I put the plate on the front, like you see, there were holes around the cobs, but they weren't sealed, so air can come through, which created an actual cool effect where the air was being sucked up right off the top of the canopy, through the cobs and out the back, 
Um, and from there, it had a nice circulation effect, which was really quite cool, and I liked it. This was what, the, what it looked like. I gave it to a buddy. He put it in his tent. He used it for one crow, decided it wasn't for him. He gave it back to me. But I'm really happy with the job, and hopefully the next videos look better. Thanks, guys.